My name is John Keegan and I'm an alcoholic. And this is a good old friend of mine, a great friend of mine, Mr. Frank O'Sullivan, who we lost about five months ago. Very sadly, he passed on. And it had a bad effect on me. We, we were great friends. We trudged the roads together for years. He was a lovely man and um, I'm glad we got his story to help people now and in the future. At least we've got that and God knows how many people it would help. I'll pass you over so you can have it for yourself. Mr. Frank O'Sullivan, thank you. So, um, good afternoon. My name is Frank and I'm an alcoholic. And it's by the grace of my higher power and the fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous that I'm sitting here hoping that something I say might help somebody. People help me in the same way. I'm not a preacher or anything like that, very far from it actually. But to give you a little insight into what, it, uh, what I'm about was uh, I was born in the west of Ireland, uh, one of uh, three sisters and two brothers, there's six of us all together, and two of the girls were twins, and my father and mother. My father was a guard, they call him in Ireland, a policeman, you know? And he, he, he was a binge drinker because every time he got his wages at the end of the month, he'd come in, gave my mother some money, and off they went then. There was uh, the sergeant and, and four of them. And when they got their money, they'd either be fighting each other or locking somebody up or shouting and hollering and all that and he'd come in you know this is true people think it's like what you see in the films those years ago he'd come in and he either threw a load of pennies up in the air for us to go after or or, or he was growling and scowling when we all shot off to bed you know my mother had a time with him but uh, however i uh, i was uh, brought up like a, a, as normal as you could be in a, in a little two street place you know and uh, I had uh, I had the best of food there was no trouble with that fresh salmon etc there was nothing wrong in that area but my father seemed to take a set on me at least that's what I thought and, and proved to be right later you know he uh, I was going around with three or four kids and we used to get six weeks holiday in uh, every year for the summer summer holidays and we'd go around you know kicking ball and this that and the other and I remember one occasion uh, we broke a window broke a pane of glass I don't know who did it but the woman was sure that I did it and she went and told my father so that embarrassed him because if it was somebody else he couldn't go after him because uh, I was amongst it so I had to sort of drift away from my friends you know what I mean and, and that and uh, I remember that uh, uh, you know, the, 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 this used to be tension in the air in the house, you know, for these three or four days he'd be on it and then he'd sleep for a couple of days and that'd be back to normal again. And they got away with it. But uh, in, 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 in all this uh, trappings and things that were going on, I had a, a, a terrible thing happen to me, you know. And uh, I must mention about the, the, the priest, the, the, we had a Catholic, uh, Catholic of course, uh, parish priest, and uh, a curate and I was going down to the, the river fishing one day with the dog and me and I'm belting along and this car pulled up, baby Ford, I'll never forget it and the, the, the curate leant out, he said, uh, get in Frank, I said, no I'm only just going around the corner, he said, get in, I want to talk to you well, <clears throat> he talked to me all right, he started touching my legs and this, that and the other and, and I didn't know and I was saying, Father, I want to get out, you know what I mean? He said, you stay here and it went farther and farther and, 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 and I said, I'll tell my father. He said, if you tell your father, I'll put a spell in you and I'll put this on you and I'll put that on you. You'll never walk again, you'll be a cripple. And me, in my innocence, I believed it. I believed it. And and, and, and as a consequence, I, I he, he, the man actually raped me. He raped me, and I, you know, I, there I am, down to this wooded area, in off the road, and all the rest of it. And he did what he did, what he did, and I was crying, and I was screaming, and he hit me a couple of times and told me, "You talk in your mouth about this." 
you know, to anybody. Well, you can imagine that there was blood coming out of my backside and I made my way around to the river when he was gone. I was crying and all the rest of it, frightened. And I sat in a bit of shallow water and I can see it to this day, you know, and, and, and rivulets of blood coming out between my legs and didn't know what to do. I was there, I was frightened, I was alone. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't go home because the blood was still there. In the, in the end, then I just wiped my backside with grass and every fucking thing, every, sorry for swearing, everything, you know, and, and, and it, it was printed in my mind. I had nightmares. My mother used to, the, day, the very day it happened, I went home that evening late and he said to me, you must have caught a few. I said, I caught nothing that, because he was, he was a great fly fisherman and he taught me the art. And that's about as much as he ever did for me, but he, he, we made our peace later. But, you know, and, and my mother said to me, you look like someone has seen a ghost, you know, and, and the rest of them all sitting around the table and I come in and uh, I was white and I was frightened. I was shaking. I said, I don't feel well. And she gave me something and after my tea and put me off to bed. And then night after night for a long, long time, I had, I had um, nightmares. And uh, I, he was still walloping me for the least thing, you know what I mean? And then it was getting bad. I ran away from home three times and I was sleeping in this farmer's hay barn and he found me and he took me back and I got another hiding and on and on and on. Well, my mother could stand it no longer because one day, I can't even remember it. It was a tr trivial thing. And he's, he, he's come in and he's in a bad humor and he grabbed me by the head, by the head like that, and he banged my head off the stove. And number eight, Stanley, I shall never forget it. And all I could see was, was lights and that in front of me and I couldn't see properly and I was dizzy and everything. And um, there was blood and, and, and my mother ran out of the the house and the doctor only lived around the corner. She sent one of the kids up for the doctor and he come down. And hot on his heels come the sergeant of the police and the priest. And the three of them were there and the doctor treated me and all the rest of them gave me some thing and, and, and you know, and that was it. And, 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 uh, and he said, you can't go out, you know. Well, I couldn't go out anyway because it was all scabs and that from the, the, the blood where it had congealed. And, 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 uh, can you picture a nine-year-old going through this, you know, and, 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 and expected to go and serve mass behind this guy on the Sunday I was an altar boy, you know? And, and can you imagine what was going on in my, in, in my mind? Fear. Terrible, terrible fear. I did not know whether I was coming or going, and I was frightened. I was really frightened. However, when the time was right, and things simmered down a bit. They, they had a go at him and told him never to lay his hand on me again. And, uh, you know, I had to get away. And when, it, when I did get away, it was all legal and above board, and he couldn't, he couldn't stop me, you know what I mean? And I stayed away from home, and I come here, and I was a young kid from the sticks, if you like, you know what I mean? I'd never seen a, a steam train in my life, and only in pictures in the papers and that. And, uh, we had no running water, I used to have to go to the spring well. Those are the kind of times it was, you know. That, that, that it was great because you were never short of food, you know. We always had plenty of food. And, and but the, the thing was, you know, he'd make me walk sometimes. If it was, he'd make me walk in front of him to church. And if there was potholes in the road and I walked in, I'd go, oh, well, look, that's the kind of man he was. And, and, uh, you know, I, I had to get away, as I say. Well, I arrived over here, courtesy of, of, of Fred and my brothers was at home, and my brother said if he wants, because I kept in touch with him, he said, if he wants to come over here, he said, you bring him back. And they did, and I got sorted, and time went on, and I made a good living, and I was able to do what I what any young man would do. I, I uh, go dancing, I could go to the cinema seven nights a week if I wanted, you know, and this was like letting a, a young lion out of a cage. And, 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 and I rubbed shoulders with the boys and I was tall and all the rest of it and we had a great time and, and, and I used to save up for my clothes and everything. And I met this girl one night in a dance hall, Irish dance hall in Holloway, the Round Tower it was called. And we started going out together and uh, she was from Hull, but her mother was from the same part as me in Ireland. And 
She and I went up home and met her people, and, then, and, and, and we got engaged, you know? And it was the happiest time of my life. I was working in demolition, and it was seven days a week. You know, there was no nonsense. You, you worked hard, and there was plenty of money available and all the rest of it. And uh, I, I took to it like a duck to water, you know? Any anger I had, I could take it out on a lump of brickwork or concrete or whatever, you know? But that aside, I, I fell in love with the girl, and I think that is the only woman I ever truly loved. But she got taken away from me. And which shattered me completely, you know. I mean, she was killed in a crash. And, and I mean, if you can picture it, my father kicking me all over the place, for starters, the priest raping me, and somebody that I truly loved was taken away from me. So I was, I was a very, very bitter young man. In fact, there was four of us lived on the first floor of the house, two brothers and another guy, and one of the brothers was in with him, and I was in with the other one, Jack. And uh, we, used to, we used to go around together, you know I mean? We had a lovely, of a Thursday, it used to be funny, like, because anybody that got paid on Friday used to have a sub off the people that got paid on Thursday. And, and we'd go down to the local, and our landlord would walk in, lovely Greek man, and he'd have a drink with us and a game of darts, and it was fantastic. And his, 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 his wife, she was terrific. She was really good to me, you know? Because I come home from work on the Saturday, I was told about it, and they took me into the front room, and the boys were there as well, and everyone knew the girl. And then when they got that news, I phoned them, and, and, and it cracked me up. I couldn't go, what it was, I could not face going to the same dance halls. I couldn't face going pubs we used to go in. I, I we used to have a great crack in, 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 in Finsbury Park, so go up and out in the boats and that. We used to have a, a laugh, you know. Couldn't go there. I just isolated my, myself. I worked all the hours God sent, and I wasn't drinking so much. I used to just go away, you know. I mean, I'd go down Tower Bridge, or I'd go over to Battersea, or any any place, you know, to get away. So that I didn't have to mix with them. And, and, and they surrounded me in the room one night, and, 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 and the landlady and everything. She said, if you don't get out of this, she said, you'll kill yourself, you'll do yourself an injury. Well, what was going through my mind was hate and anger and resentment and, and very bitter. And that wasn't right for a, for a young man, you know? But being brought up in, 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 in the way I was and being a victim of all these different things, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't face anyone. I just went to work, kept my head down, and that went on for about 15 months. They had me in the house and they said, Frank, look, even my foreman said to me, he said, Frank, have three or four days off, because you're, you know, he said, you, you'll get paid. Don't worry about it. Have a few days off. In fact, go back to Ireland. I said, no fucking way, you know. Anyway, I met the woman I was to marry after that, and uh, I got married, and, and, and she was coming back from, a, from a, a, a bit of trouble she had, and it was dicey with her parents, you know what I mean, and uh, this, that, and the other, but we got married anyway, and uh, I... Uh, had four daughters and a son. But then it started to go sour because I found something that could do away with all my worries, do away with all my fears, do away with everything, alcohol. And I was drinking more and more. And I must have been, on reflection, I was kidding myself because I'd look up at the clock and see eight o'clock. Everybody else would be indoors having their tea, you know, I'd be there. Why shouldn't I have a few pints, you know what I mean? Didn't realize that it was creeping up in me, and it did. And it finally nailed me. There was no... Uh, 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 life went on. And as long as she had her wages, that was, that was it, you know? Take the kids on holiday, yeah, and, 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 and that, and do the duty. That's all I was doing. And, and, and uh, things it began to go a bit pear-shaped, but... You know, with determination and that, and the help of alcohol, you know, I, I was able to cope with it. But there come a time with, with the progressive drinking that I was doing. Now, alcohol is funny, and, and, and alcoholics are complicated people. We each have a different way of approaching life and the thoughts and this, that, and the other. And, you know, I didn't... Uh, I didn't do, do too bad, you know, I was keeping abreast of things, but I, 
my marriage was going sour and that led to rows and this, that and the other. And uh, anyway, a friend of mine, I used to support West Ham Football Club and he, John, he was a, a foreman on, on uh, the GLC and if I could meet, I'd meet him over there on a Saturday and he'd bring the can, he'd bring me home, you know, and we'd just go over there and have a few jars and that and watch West Ham at home and, and that was good. And then I began to take my boy as he grew up and then this, this, I did everything right, but I wasn't looking after anybody. It was being done for me, you know what I mean? I made the gesture, there's pound notes, this is for Frank, that's for you, and there's the pocket money for the kids, etc., etc. And uh, eventually alcohol, I, I started on spirits then, and alcohol was getting right into my blood, and eventually I wound up that I, um, I had to drink before I went to work in the morning. And when you're up pulling down a cinema and you're up on the roof there about, about, about 120 foot up, like on a nine inch wall, and you know, and, and, and it was bad, it was bad. I shouldn't have done it. But anyway, I was warned a few times and I thought, sorry, I went off somewhere else. And eventually my mate persuaded me. His wife got in touch with the Alcoholics Anonymous and they come to visit me. The man they called Religious John, I'll never forget him, the lovely man. He come into my house and uh, he looked around and everything and, uh, you know, he said, I'll tell you what we'll do. If, you're, if you do want to stop drinking, I said, I do. He said, we'll get a, a woman from Al-Anon, that's for partners of alcoholic, practicing alcoholics and, and, and or recovering alcoholics and uh, speak to your wife about it. Well, that made it easier for me because she was told that she shouldn't take my drink and pour it down the sink or anything like that. Let me drink myself out. And of course, she didn't think much of it, but she went to Al-Anon and I was going to AA. And I went and I, I come into the fellowship and I didn't know. I thought these people in the rooms and all their smiles and all that. And somebody said the newcomer, which was me, on this occasion is the most important person in the room. And, oh, what's, what's going on? What, what did they teach how to drink socially or whatever it was? But uh, <laughs> that's what I thought. I was mixed up. I did not know where I was coming or going. And eventually I got worse and worse and worse. People wouldn't imply me unless I was sober. Then I wasn't able to work and I was sick and I was shunted off to Natsbury. It's an asylum out in uh, near St Albans, Herbshire, and they had no uh, detox program in there as such, you know. But they fed you the right stuff, and 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 you know, I just lazed about, you know. And uh, you know, they were glad to see the back of me out of the house, but I gave them a tough time. Now then, it eventually broke. I mean, I I I was going on. I was sober for six months. Then I drink, and then I had alcoholic fits and. I went, it was like, like degradation, you know, I, I was living in a filthy, horrible, you know, uh, unkind world. That's the way I looked at it. Why me? You know? And uh, anyway, uh, to cut a long story short, eventually I met some people in AA. They're still my friends today. And, and I'm not a preacher. I said this before. I'm not a preacher. But I'm no uh, Bible puncher either. Today, through my time in AA and the people that I met in there. Every morning I wake up now, I'm, I'm there and I know what I'm doing and I haven't had a drink. And the help I got in AA was second to none. But my home life was gone. As I sobered up, my home life took a different turn and I was copping on to things that were happening when I wasn't uh, around, etc., etc. But then I made my mind up. I, 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 I was going to leave and uh, <laughs> I met this lady in St. Bernard's and that's not a, a good place to take a partner in most cases. But uh, I didn't know she was uh, at a dual addiction, drugs and uh, uh, booze and, you know, it began to evolve and then I had slip after slip, you know what I mean? I made my mind up. I left home, the kids come after me having a go at me. A couple of months later, they come back and say, why didn't you tell us what was going on? I said, no. Well, I must emphasize this. I know I'm jumping about, but that's, that's my nature. Um, that I got 
from AA something that I never dreamed possible, peace of mind. You know, I was going off because I was mixing methadone, man-made, uh, what you call it, man-made uh, heroin. And I was using that with booze and speed. So I was going down, down, down. And there was one man in particular, John is his name, he, he was a great friend of mine and a great friend to me, you know, and I thought I could never pay him back. You know, the, the, the way he looked after me and he was there. He was there 24-7 if I needed it. And at the last time, I started losing my memory and I stepped having fits and I had a, a heart attack and didn't know about it. And I was in and out of hospital and I was going around like a rake. But then again, A pulled me back, the people in it. And today, I've got my own place. I'm on good terms with my family. And I managed to... I furnished it out and I'm proud of that you know because when you think of somebody that used to fall asleep on the step outside the door and, and, and wake up there at six in the morning and it's covered in snow and all the rest of it these things are not fantasies these things happen and to get sober you've got to be truthful and you've got to face up to these things and Alcoholics Anonymous has given would give you all the tools you know I know a lot of my friends that They'd, they'd mix and they'd go, but they didn't put it in, in, in perspective and they say, nah, that's not good to us. That was because it didn't work out the way they wanted it. Poor me and all the rest of it. And today, I'm happy. I've had a, a lot of uh, stress with uh, different medical conditions, you know, and that, and uh, that's getting better now, actually. It's getting better because I'm, I'm, I'm under the proper people. I've got a psychiatrist for the elderly, and uh, he, I was on antidepressants for 18 years. He stopped me having them. In con he went with my doctor. He said, they're bad for your heart. I thought, Jesus, I must have had some heart. She sa he said to me, when he, he said, you had one heart attack. Did you know about it? I said, no. He said, hmm. He was reading my notes, and he's a wonderful man. And I'm off for a fortnight's holiday now to do a bit of fishing and that in Ireland. And I'm coming back on the 1st of August, and uh, then I've got an appointment with him, an appointment with some other people, and then I'll know which way to go with this, this, this condition of mine. They're hoping it'll be all right and uh, that, but if it's not, I, I'll still be okay. You know, I know what I've got to do today. I wake up clean, in a clean bed. I bathe regularly. You know, they're actually putting a shower in for me because of my legs, but that, that's, these are things that are coming to me out of the blue. And, I, you know, sometimes I have to pinch myself that this is reality. I was a raving lunatic, you know, and, and, and uh, I, I was uh, doing a, a chair for AA once and, and uh, uh, I said the insanity of drinking, the way I saw it, my view was going back to it time after time after time and always expecting different results. No good, no good. And I was pulled up by this bloke, and he said, he said to me, he said, what are you talking about insanity? He said, there's no insanity in the big book. This is the book of Alcoholics Anonymous, the, the, the book that gives this a guideline and some spin-offs from it. It's a fantastic program. And uh, I said to him, look at the second step. They do steps, and, uh, and uh, it says, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Well, to be restored to sanity, you have to be insane or doing insane things. It's simple, mad, gone, off the head. Today, as I say, I can't emphasize enough what Alcoholic Synonymous has done for me. I'm a new man. I'm my own man. You know, I live a good life. I don't go out, get up in the morning intending to belt somebody or something like that like years ago, you know. And I, a very lucky man to be here. As I say, I'm not a preacher, but I'll say one thing. If Alcoholics Anonymous can make me sober and living like I am, it'll do it for anybody. And I was close calls on three occasions, but here I am today. And I, I, I'm not pussyfooting around, you know. I, I, I've got to have this program. It's part of me. It's my life. You know, the University of Life, a friend of mine used to call it, and it's quite true. And those people in the fellowships, when you see them going about, 
They could be cringing in a corner 12 months ago and here they are, back to business. They get on with their marriage. Everything turns out right, and that's a fact. But I'll close on that now. But anybody, any young person or any old person or anybody who has a problem with drink, it doesn't cost anything. All you've got to do is phone up. And there's no charge. You're not taking on this program for a thousand pound a week and all that nonsense. It's there. It's there. And it's for everybody. And on that note, I think I'll finish. And, you know, if somebody, I've always said, if in a 12 months, if somebody, one sentence I say in that 12 months helps anybody, I've done my job. Thank you very much.